Yeah, this is a very fun way to produce hydrogen gas. This is this is nice because it gives you a break from the electricity. You don't need electricity to do this. And it gives you a break from the pure oxygen. We're only going to be making hydrogen. You know, here it is on the table of elements, you know, hydrogen. That's the Greek word for hydro means water and gen means giver in Greek. So it only produces water when burned. So this reactor produces very pure hydrogen gas. There is no oxygen produced in this process. It burns by, you know, the gas burns by using the ambient air oxygen in the earth here, in our atmosphere, for the combustion process to take place. This is very pure gas, and this is how they filled the Hindenburg airships at the time. I'll show you how all that works. So the idea is here, we're not going to use electricity in this process. We don't want any oxygen. I'm not going to use an electrolysis cell and produce hydrogen and oxygen. I only want to produce hydrogen in this process. Okay? No oxygen. We don't want any oxygen. We're going to use a bubbler for safety. I'm going to go ahead and hook this hydrogen generator directly up to one of my reactor cores that's just full of distilled water. Okay? So no oxygen. So everything you need to build the reactor is right here on the table. You're going to need some 4 inch. You need some inch and a half. There's a coupling. See, and this is the PVC cap that I use. It's Schedule 40. It's made by ERA. Alright. Very simple parts. Here's the brass pieces that I used to make the exit port and the safety valve. Some JB weld, some magic lube, thread tape, sandpaper, heavy PVC cement, and make sure you have some JB weld quick. We're going to use that to put on the sides and the edges. It's going to look like this. You know, you're going to sand it after you seal it. It's going to have a very tight seal. You want it to be watertight. Very simple. See what's important right here. Here's my magnesium bar that I'm going to use. And if you look down in the bottom of the reactor here, you want to have this. I cut the edge off of that four inch screen. So you're going to shove that down in here. It's going to fit right in the bottom here. So I get it in. It's going to go way down in there. So this way, this sits on there and vibrates. You know, you don't put all the heat on the bottom of the reactor. You don't want the heat this process right here is going to generate heat when this is in here and you don't want it sitting on the very bottom of the reactor so that's why you have that screen in there that will be about where the middle of the reactor is towards the, towards the bottom and remember the bottom cap that I use is made by ERA that's the company it's actually a schedule 40 PVC cap okay so that means it can handle pressure. You can use the round cap if you want, but it's not going to stand up on the table. But that's where I get my flat cap. So there's the bottom. It's uh, very simple, nothing fancy. Let's take a closer look at the reactor's base, the core here. Now you can see I've let it dry for two days and it's very solid. I've sanded it off. It's watertight and it's finished. So before I assemble the top here, I'm going to show you guys this. How this works, how the safety port works, the exit port for the gas. See, I have this 3 8 hole right here. you got to look at this. See how large this hole is? It's got to be 3 8 or larger. I mean, you can make it as large as you want. That's the most important part about this. When you assemble this reactor, you got to have that exit port where you know that gas and that pressure that's going to come out of there is going to be released faster than you can create it. And what I've come up with is this design. This hose is designed to burst, heat up, or fall apart and release the gas. You can see how small it goes down to, so I can hook it up to all my other reactors. So it goes down to a small hole, 
but the hole that exits this reactor is very large and then it goes to this plastic tube and that guarantees that it's going to release it every time. You don't want to fracture the reactor. I mean it runs at low pressure, you don't have to worry about all that. But you've got to have a large exit hole. It's got to be 3 8 or larger. So that guarantees the release of that gas no matter how much pressure you create. This thing's going to fall over or whatever, it's going to keep spraying out. You want to make sure that that's able to release every time. It's the most important part of the reactor. So don't judge this thing by its size, it's small. But it can produce a constant and limitless supply of pure hydrogen gas very quickly. As long as, long as you have hydrochloric acid and you have a source of magnesium, there's no limit to, to what gas this thing can produce. You can see my little screen down there in the bottom, and that's what this will be on. So the hydrogen gas exit port is very important. Three eighths or larger, it has to be that way. That's the most important part of the reactor. So you know it's going to release that pressure faster than I can create it. The hose will burst. Alright guys, so before I show you this next part, let's go outside where it's ventilated and I can show you how to adjust the reactor's hydrochloric acid to a manageable level so you can control the speed of the hydrogen gas production. So I've come outside to show you this part of the reaction. On the left here I've diluted the acid using distilled water. Okay, you see I filled it all the way up to the top, well over a cup. On the right here we have half a cup of pure hydrochloric acid. And that's too strong for the reactor. We don't want to put it in there that strong. You can, but if you do, look, look how incredibly strong in the amount of fumes that it puts off. See, so that, that's a little too strong. That's not what we want. We want to dilute that. We want to dilute that reaction. It's very important that you dilute it. If you come over here to the left, you can see that it's dilute. And the solution is still very powerful. Okay? You're making hydrogen at an enormous rate. So you see why I diluted the reactor. I don't get the fumes like you are over here on the right. So to handle your acid, it's much, much easier to dilute it and work with it and lower the level of that strength. That's a little bit too strong when it's pure. It's almost impossible to work with. Doesn't matter what metal you throw in there. Aluminum, magnesium. It's too powerful. Okay? And always work with this outside. You see all my stuff's right there. Understand that there's many settings for this. You don't have to run this thing at full power 100% all the time. You want to start low and slow. So I have a dilute acid solution here, and then I have a very dilute acid solution. See, and there's no more fumes, and it's a controlled reaction. Okay? See, here's all my magnesium. And if you notice over here, I have two eyewashes. Not one, but two. When you're working with acid, it doesn't matter if you have a dilute solution or a little tiny cup of acid. You have to have your eye protection on, you have to have eye wash, and I even have my shower ready and some towels and things over here to the side that you don't see, just in case. And it doesn't matter how much acid you're working with, you always have to have your safety gear. Always. And when I used to clean pools, I'd walk around with flip-flops, a t-shirt, and no goggles, and a pair of sunglasses working with muriatic acid all, all day. I've never had any problems. But when you're working with science, you want to take that extra precaution and be careful. So let's continue on here. As you can see, the reactor core has a wide range of, of settings and depending on how far you dilute the acid solution, okay, and how, how much magnesium you toss into the reactor's core is going to determine, you know, how fast your reactions go. So you want to start low and slow, that's the secret. Let me show you what happens here. So here's that dilute solution. That's a little too fast, I'm still getting a few fumes. That's, that's a pretty good setting right there. Let's go over to the side here to the very dilute solution. See it's moving a lot slower. See how I have complete control over the production of the gas? And I do that by diluting it using water to dilute these solutions. It's very important that you guys learn to do that. It's 
So there's a lot of different elements out there that you can use to make hydrogen gas in this reactor. You know, magnesium is one of the best. That's why I choose it. It's one of my favorites. But you can also use aluminum. Uh, I, I don't advise using aluminum foil because it reacts very quickly, but you can. Make sure you have a solid piece of aluminum. And I've removed all these ferrocerium sparkers off the end of this magnesium. You know, I've taken them off there, save them for another project. Remember, it's all about how clever you can be when you're working with PVC. It's like Legos and building reactors this way. It's all about your imagination. It really is. It's about your heart's desires. It's not like some obsolete fossil fuel. You're going to be heading for the stars with this type of energy. You know, space is not just some playground for the elites. It's your destiny. You guys are going to take your place amongst the stars and you're going to have to use these elements right here. This is the key. This is the secret to all. These are the building blocks to all your inventions. So you got to remember a pure hydrogen flame without oxygen burns at about 2,800 degrees. And an HHO flame has 5,100 degrees with its added oxygen. And don't forget, hydrochloric acid is one of the strongest chemicals known to man. That's what you'll be working with. When I worked in the pool industry, you use it every day. Chlorine and hydrochloric acid. It all goes hand in hand with the chemical industry. So I have a very dilute solution here. I'm going to run this at low power. You know, I showed you guys how to do that just a few minutes ago. So I'm going to go ahead and drop a piece of the reactor fuel in here, the magnesium right in the top. So I've closed the valve. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the bubbler. Let the pressure build up. And here we go. It's a very pure hydrogen gas coming out there. I'm going to go ahead and light the end of it. Let, it. let it purge the tank and push out all the air. So very few things on your starship will be as powerful as the reaction you see right here. It produces very pure hydrogen gas that is completely invisible to human senses. you got to remember that. Even the flame is hard to detect. It's a, a violet flame that you can barely see. It's kind of a lilac. So it's so clean, it's pure, it's almost... It's almost completely invisible. I'm going to light it here in a second and show you. I'm letting the tank purge out. You can see the reactions taking place right now. Still pushing out all the air. Give me a second and we'll light it up. You gotta remember this flame only produces water when burned. So this is an excellent way to make fresh clean drinking water using this process. And normally I have the reactor sitting in a bucket like this. It's full of water up to here. Kinda looks like this. And that way I can open the valve too and purge the tank and push the water right back down into the bucket. You can stop creating the gas too if you want. There we go. See, and you can barely see that flame. It's completely invisible. See, look at it, watch. It's very pure hydrogen gas. It's almost completely invisible to human senses. This is the only way I can show it to you guys. I have to stick this piece of paper up here. You can't even see it. It just makes water when you burn. See? Look. See the glass? So it's an invisible flame that only produces water. That's what hydrogen is. This is very pure hydrogen. This is how you make your airship too. Completely invisible.